So I have an interesting little project that just arrived in the mail. Tascam 22-2. Capstan is not turning. The drive belt has turned to goo. I'm gonna get the worst of it with the screwdriver. This is really nasty stuff. Okay, now that I've gotten the big chunks of gunk. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the capstan motor on the flywheel over here. I tried a few different things on this and what actually seems to work best is window cleaner. I've only been at this for a couple of minutes and it's already looking pretty good. This one is considerably nastier, so I'm just going to let it soak a while. So that came out amazingly well. It just sat in that solution for a couple of minutes and um, just ran my hand over it. Yeah, I don't know how well you can see this, but there's bits of gunk on these support structures here. So instead of dismantling the entire machine, I'm just dipping cotton swabs in this window cleaner and uh, rubbing off the residue. This part is going to suck. Managed to actually get it in one piece. I've pretty much gotten all that goo, so right now I'm just getting dust. I thought while I was waiting for the new belts, I, uh, I'm gonna go 8-bit guy here and try to do some cosmetic restoration as well, scrape off this crud, whatever it is, and uh, fix the yellowing on these buttons. Today should be a warm and sunny day, so I thought it'd be a good time to attempt an uh, improvised retro brighting solution. Okay, it's about 11.15 a.m. and I put this on my roof because it's the only place I consistently get sunlight on my property. Okay, so leaving these out in the sun didn't really do a whole lot, so I tried the experiment with uh, hydrogen peroxide in uh, a pan on the stove at 160 degrees, and that made quite a bit of difference. They're not perfect, but I think it's a lot better than it was. I just got a new capstan belt and a counter belt in the mail today. I just ordered them off of eBay. It costs like 13 bucks. I don't really need to change the uh, counter belt, but I'm gonna do it anyway. There's a little gap between the flywheel here and the head block, so I'm just gonna fish this belt through that gap. Okay, I'm reaching around behind the deck with my other hand to try and uh, help to nail this into place. Okay, I think I got it. I left the capstan motor loose. Now that's well seated. I'm going to turn this around the other way and tighten these, these three screws here. Okay, there's a little bush in here. Just lifted that out of the way so the capstan can pass through the hole. Okay, I got a hold of the belt. And now I have the uh, capstan flywheel most of the way through this hole. I'm slowly rotating it as I'm pushing it further. Okay, that feels like it's firmly in place. I'm just wiping off the old oil. Got a little bit of my favorite triflow here. Okay, now I'm going to secure the flywheel in place. Got the capstan back in place and I've guided the belt into a better position so that's centered over the, both flywheels. Now I'm going to do the counter. This should be significantly easier. Pushing the brake out of the way and just rotating. There's a little groove behind the take-up reel, so I just found a groove with the belt. 
I'm going to give these gears just a little bit of oil. And I'll put the screws back. While I have the case apart, I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of oil to the bearings for the supply and take up reels. Just a couple of drops is all it takes. A little bit of oil in the capstan bearing. And just a tiny bit for every moving part in here. These are mechanical objects and while this is a lower end professional tape recorder. When well maintained, it can last for decades. Before I get too far into putting this back together, I wanted to point out a few things. This is a three motor deck. So there's supply, take up, capstan. That's important for professional tape decks for stability and longevity. It uses a three head design, so that's erase, record, playback, and it is half track, so each track, two tracks now, takes up half the tape basically, plus it lets you monitor off of the tape while you're recording so you know you have a good signal. And uh, it runs at 15 inches per second, and those are what I would say meet the minimum criteria for a professional tape recorder. Now, the unfortunate thing about this is the adjustments for the electronics are down here, and it only takes up to seven inch reels. I don't mind that the capstan is belt driven. It's basically just an inexpensive way to reduce flutter. The belt acts as sort of a shock absorber between the motor and the capstan, so I don't think that's a big of a deal. This would be a great starter deck. I would not recommend anything less than this. First, I need to check the uh, playback, fast forward, and rewind tension. That's pretty close. Good. And do the same thing for rewind. Very good. By the way, I'm getting the specifications out of the service manual for the 22-4 which is available at hifienginecom and uh, they're basically the same deck except for the number of channels they record.